Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the synthesis of spiral chain slide A and B. This work is taken from the paper Biogenesis Inspired Divergent Synthesis of Spiral Chain Slide A, Spiral Chain Slide B, and Abby Farin B, employing a radical pullover crossover rearrangement strategy that was published in JAX by the Heritage Group. These molecules were first isolated by Go et al. from Abby's Chensiensis. They exhibit a range of biological effects, including anti tumor, antimicrobial, anti ulcerogenic, anti inflammatory, anti hypertensive, anti tussive, CNS modulation, and nitrous oxide inhibition activity. Spirochan slide A has previously been synthesized in 22 steps by Lang, Chen, and Yang. Their synthesis is quite elegant and creative, and I've covered it previously on this channel if you want to check it out. The structure of Spirochan slide A presents some interesting challenges for the synthetic chemist. It contains a spirocyclic ring junction, two contiguous quaternary centers, and also a spiroketal, all of which are chiral and must be constructed stereoselectively. In order to overcome these challenges, the researchers would use a mind-wall rearrangement to construct the spirocyclic ring junction, while the contiguous quaternary centres could be introduced using a chiral starting material and also a Wagner-Meerwein rearrangement. To construct the spiroketal, they could use an oxidative cyclization of a hemiacetal with an alkyne. So let's jump into the synthesis. This starts with the acetylation of lanosterol which is a steroid compound obtained from sheep's wool. DMAP first reacts with acetic anhydride, forming a more reactive acetylating agent, which then reacts with a hydroxyl group. The product was taken forward without purification and was subject to a Mieux von Rudolph oxidation. The compound first reacts with potassium permanganate, forming a cyclic intermediate that is hydrolyzed to reveal a diol. Reaction with sodium periodate once again forms a cyclic intermediate which fragments to form an aldehyde. The reaction is carried out in basic aqueous media and hydroxide can then attack this aldehyde, forming a hemiacetal that reacts with another equivalent of potassium permanganate. This abstracts a hydrogen atom and oxidizes the molecule to form a carboxylic acid with a 47% yield achieved over two steps. This reaction is quite similar to the Lemieux-Johnson oxidation, however this reaction using potassium permanganate will produce a carboxylic acid, unlike the Lumia-Johnson method, which uses osmium tetroxide and primarily produces the aldehyde. This carboxylic acid was required for the dehydrogenative decarboxyolefination reaction. The substrate is first deprotonated and the anion is then oxidized by an iridium-4 species generated from an iridium catalyst bearing a bipy ligand and two pyridyl phenyl ligands. The radical produced can then undergo decarboxylation, generating a primary radical upon the elimination of carbon dioxide. This primary radical is then trapped by a cobalt oxime complex, forming a carbon cobalt bond. Upon irradiation with light from blue LEDs, this can undergo a beta hydride elimination to produce the target alkene in an 86% yield. The cobalt hydride complex then reacts with a conjugate acid, forming hydrogen gas and regenerating the base together with a cobalt-3 species. This cobalt-3 species can be reduced by the iridium-3 complex after it undergoes photoexcitation. This regenerates the cobalt-2 complex necessary to trap the primary radical and also generates the iridium-4 complex needed to generate the carboxy radical. The newly generated alkene was then subject to hydroboration. Borane THF complex undergoes a concert addition to the alkene adding a hydride to the more substituted end and leaving the boron group on the terminal position. Hydrogen peroxide then attacks this boron, forming a borate that undergoes a rearrangement, forming a carbon-oxygen bond together with the elimination of hydroxide. This hydroxide then attacks the boron to once again form a borate that can be hydrolyzed upon workup to form an alcohol in a 59% yield. In the next step, the authors carried out the crucial radical polar crossover reaction. The reaction of bis-acetoxyiodobenzene and sodium iodide transiently generates triiodide, which reacts with the hydroxyl group to form an iodo-oxy intermediate that produces a radical upon irradiation. An intramolecular hydrogen transfer then occurs, forming a radical that can undergo single electron transfer 
to form a carbocation. This carbocation then undergoes a wagner meerwein rearrangement, which is a 1-2 methyl migration. This is a stereoretentive migration, as the overlap of the methyl homo with the empty p orbital guarantees that it only occurs on the top face. This migration produces a new carbocation that is then attacked by the hydroxyl group, forming the product in a 34% yield. This reaction proved to be difficult to scale up and instead was carried out on multiple 100 mg batches when more material was required. Taking this compound forward, another wagner meerwein rearrangement was carried out, this time promoted by titanium tetrachloride. This coordinates to the ether, making it a good leaving group, allowing for the 1-2 methyl shift to occur and producing the second quaternary stereocenter. The carbocation produced by this rearrangement causes an elimination reaction, forming a new alkene in a 97% yield. This alkene reacts in the next step with N-iodosuccinamide, forming an iodinium species. The 1-4 conjugate addition of water then occurs, opening the iodinium to form an iodide. This iodide coordinates to silver nitrate present in the reaction mixture, making it a good leaving group and promotes the migration of a double bond, together with the attack of the hydroxyl group, to form an epoxide. This epoxide allows for a mine wall rearrangement, where a carbon-carbon bond migrates together with the opening of the epoxide, forming the ketone and the spirocyclic ring junction in a 74% yield. The researchers could confirm the stereochemistry of this product using X-ray crystallography. In the next step, they used desmartin periodinane to oxidize the hydroxyl group. This attacks the iodine center, displacing an acetate, which then acts as a base to deprotonate the now activated carbon center and form the carbon oxygen double bond, together with the elimination of the DMP byproduct. This aldehyde was oxidized further using a pinic oxidation. The reaction of sodium chloride with sodium hydrogen phosphate generates chlorous acid, and this protonates the aldehyde, making it more electrophilic and allowing the chlorate to attack the carbon center. An intramolecular hydrogen abstraction of this tetrahedral intermediate then occurs, and this forms the desired carboxylic acid in a 74% yield over two steps. With this acid now constructed, it could be used as a directing group in the white chen oxidation. The acetonitrile ligands present on the white chen catalyst are very labile and can be displaced by the carboxylic acid, which acts as a ligand. Hydrogen peroxide, also present in the reaction mixture, reacts with this iron center, oxidizing it to iron 5, which is a very unstable oxidation state for iron. This high oxidation state provides the driving force for the abstraction of the hydrogen radical. This is guided by the coordination to the carboxylic acid and only occurs at one site in the molecule. A cyclization from the carboxylic acid to this newly formed radical then occurs. The mechanism of this reaction has not been proven, but it could be proposed to go through a radical mechanism. Also plausible is further oxidation of this radical to form a cation, and then cyclization occurring through an ionic mechanism. This oxidation was successful in forming the product in a 57% yield as a single isomer, as the cyclization can only occur from the bottom face of the molecule due to the stereochemistry of the quaternary carbon centre. Taking this compound forward, it was reacted with a Grignard reagent of TMS propargyl bromide. This added to both the acetate and the lactone esters, forming tetrahedral intermediates. The lactone alkoxide was protonated, forming a hemiacetal, while the acetate eliminated an alkoxide that was then protonated to produce an alcohol. The hydroxyl of the hemiacetal group and the alkyne were perfectly poised to take part in an oxidative lactone cyclization. Palladium 2 chloride first activates the alkyne, promoting the intramolecular attack of the hydroxyl group and the formation of the spiroketal. Protonolysis of the carbon palladium bond once again forms a palladium pi complex. This activated species can react with water, which adds across a double bond in a syn manner, producing a hemiacetal and a palladium carbon bond on the same face of the ring as a carbon TMS bond. This stereochemistry allows for a beta silicon elimination, eliminating palladium TMS chloride and producing an enol that can totimerize to form the spirolactone in a 48% yield. The reductive elimination of TMS chloride produces a palladium zero species. This is oxidized by copper dichloride to reform palladium dichloride and reinitiate the catalytic cycle. With this lactone now complete, the authors 
needed to install a methyl group at the alpha position. To do this, it was first deprotonated with sodium hydride and the resulting enolate then added to diethyl oxalate, eliminating one equivalent of ethoxide. An enolate is once again formed at the alpha position by deprotonation with sodium hydride and this then adds to formaldehyde, producing an alcohol upon protonation. This alcohol then adds to another equivalent of formaldehyde, generating an alkoxide that attacks the ketone, forming a tetrahedral intermediate that can then fragment, forming an exomethylene group. This methylene group was isomerized using triruthenium dodecacarbonyl to produce spirochancellite A in a 44% yield. The authors could not directly transform spirochancellite A into spirochancellite B, so instead they returned to an earlier precursor and oxidized the hydroxyl group using desmartin periodinate to produce a ketone. L-selectride was then used to reduce this ketone in a 60% yield to form a hydroxyl group with the opposite stereochemistry. Attacking this ketone from the top face should be disfavoured due to steric repulsion from the axial methyl groups, but a possible explanation for the stereochemical result of this reaction could lie in the torsion effects. If the nucleophile attacks from the bottom face, the oxygen must pass through an eclipsing conformation with the alpha methyl group in order to take up the axial position upon addition of the hydride. However, if the hydride attacks from the top face, this eclipse in conformation is avoided and therefore this reaction pathway will have a lower kinetic energy barrier. This product would also be more thermodynamically stable as having the larger oxygen group in the equatorial position will minimise 1,3 diaxial interactions with the other methyl groups present in the molecule. If you would like to learn more about conformational analysis, hit the link above for my ultimate guide where I go through this topic in detail. With the stereochemistry of this hydroxyl group now inverted, they could follow the same steps as before to complete the synthesis of spirochancellite B. Well that's everything for this week. In the next video we will be looking at some medicinal chemistry and seeing how protein nanoparticles can be used to deliver novel indian compounds for the imaging and therapy of cancer.